So we've got a boot. We've got a screw. Okay. So... So this tutorial is going to go over how we could create an item spawner, which will spawn items based on the chance that we give to spawn the items, as well as taking a little look at item synergies that are in Binding of Isaac. So let's first create a new script, and I'm going to call this item spawner. So I guess the first way that you think about going about this is creating a list of uh, a game object reference to all of our items, uh, which would create a new list of type game object, right? And then simply in the inspector, we can just go ahead, drag these in. Um, but if we were to go ahead and instantiate our um, game object based on a random index, so say we had three items in there and we create a random number between 0 and 3, okay, or 0 and 2, so, so it could be 0, 1 or 2, then there would be a 1 in 3 chance of spawning each of these items, which is sort of cool because then we can just keep adding, we can duplicate items in our list and that could change the chance, so we could have like five boots or whatever. But this isn't gonna really uh, work too well uh, if we had maybe a hundred items in our game. We could have maybe up to thousands of items in this list, which is really not a viable option. So to fix this, I'm actually gonna create a struct. Now, this struct will be able to uh, hold data for not only our game object, but also awaiting for their chance to spawn. Okay, so I've called it spawnable and it's gonna have a public game object. I'm just gonna call it game object. And it's also gonna have a public float and I'm gonna call this wait, okay? Oops. Now I'm going to make this um, system dot serializable, okay? And now that we have this, I also just want to quickly have a total weight float, okay? And uh, this is going to be used to calculate the total weight based on how many, uh, based on all of the weights of our individual spawnables. I guess we'll just create an awake void in existence I guess and there's awake then our total weight will be zero. Now for each spawnable okay I'm just gonna call it spawnable with a lowercase okay um, in our items then we want our total weight to plus equal to our spawnable wait but the problem with this is we're only taking a game object so we need to actually make use of our struct so we can just call in a spawnable so spawnable okay now within our start method as we want to spawn it straight away so i'm going to create a float and this is going to be called pick and we can just have call a random value and we can multiply it by the total weight, okay? I'm also going to create a chosen index. Okay, I'm gonna set that to zero. And we also want a cumulative weight, okay? So cumulative weight equals items at zero dot weight, okay? Now while our pick is greater than our cumulative weight, okay? and our chosen index is less than our items.count minus one, okay? Then we simply want our chosen index to increment and we want our cumulative weight to plus equal to our items at our chosen index dot weight, 
pressure set cells behind it. So we're just going to keep going through, adding weight until we find our chosen index. Okay. And with that, we can simply instantiate our item. So I can have game object i for item equals instantiate uh, items at our chosen index. Okay. Dot game object because we want to use the game object, not the uh, spawnable struct transform dot position uh, quaternion dot identity. Okay. As a game object. Cool. So if we go back into our scene now and we create a uh, an item spawner. Okay. Now, just chuck that on. So we can add, we've got three here. So I'm just gonna have three. So our game object can be our potion, our boot, and our screw. Now, if these get removed within the game and you wanna reference them later on, uh, what you can do is actually create a prefab of them, which is as simple as dragging them into here, okay? Potion, boot, screw, and now instead of having all these, we can reference them to our prefabs, okay? And now we can create a weight. Now, since we have a total weight, for all of these. It doesn't actually matter. These don't have to add up to like one or 100% or whatever. We can make them whatever we like, but we just need to take into account that it's going to add all three of these weights together and then give it its respective percentage based on that. So I could say maybe we want our potion to spawn most of the time. So we could make it like 70% of the time. Um, and we can make this like, 20% of the time, but then we can have this at 10% of the time, which adds up to 100, but we don't have to, but just for the sake of clarity and understanding makes it a bit easier. Now, if we just double check where this is, it's actually on us. So put it over here. If we run the game now, see we've got a potion. And majority of the time it should spawn a potion, because it's got 0.7%. But there will be occasions where we have a boot and a screw, rarely. So for whatever items you would like to put in your game, you simply just need to increase your size um, and add the respective object. So now we can go ahead, collect it, sweet, now we've got our boost. Now, the next thing we want to do is create an item synergy. So uh, within Binding of Isaac, this is where you collect two different items and they create a, I guess, bonus effect because you have both of those items. So the first thing we're going to have to do is create a reference to all of our objects that we've collected. Okay. And once we've done that, we can check whether we've collected them. So uh, the developers of Binding of Isaac actually uh, did these all manually, um, which is fairly simple, but if you have hundreds of items, um, it might be a bit harder, but I guess if you want completely random effects, or well not random, but specific effects, then it's sort of hard to actually make these automatic for you. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my game controller, and I guess I'll create some new balls, so private ball. Um, boot collected equals false, private ball, uh, screw collected Oop. equals false. Okay. Then we can create a, a list. Okay. And this can be of type we can add in the string for the name. So based on the name, we'll be able to check whether we've collected a boot. So a list of type string, okay. And I'll just call it item, item names. And 
or maybe collected names equals new list of type string. Cool, we need a void. So public void update col whoop, collected items, okay? And we probably want to take in um, the item that we've collected. So we can just take in the collection controller of our item. Whoop, not item, it's just item. And so what we can do is we can go collected collected names dot add and we want to add in our item uh, dot item dot name okay sweet so now once we've added that in what we can do is we can go for each string um, I'll just call this I in collected names we're going to switch based on our string, okay? And in case uh, we have a boot, then we can simply set boot collected to true. And break. So case screw. Um, screw collected equals true and break. Okay. Now, if we have a boot and a screw, then we can change our fire rate. So fire rate change. Maybe we want to add an extra 0.25 to that. And that should be sweet. Now, in our collection controller, we want to call this. So game controller dot um, instance dot update collected items. Okay. And we can just take in this. Cool. So if we just have a look. So we've got a boot, we've got a screw, okay, so, oh. so we have now changed our fire rate to be very, very fast, <laughs> we have a look, our fire delay is zero, so we're not actually taking, we're not taking any time in delay between now. um, bullet fires, which is pretty cool. Um, obviously, you probably want to change it uh, since we're already removing 0.05, uh, 0.025, okay, from the screw, and then we're removing the extra 0.025. <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll be sure to uh, get to them and try to answer them. Um, I have had a few suggestions about um, future episodes and what you guys would like. So if you have any think that you want me to cover, um, be sure to leave a comment and I will see what I can do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and... I'll see you guys later. Thanks. Correction half inch ahead for the year and one and fifty three hundredths behind for the for the year so far. We'll be looking for a little bit of a change tomorrow and of course the possibility of some scattered showers. Today of course there's nothing showing up on the radar.